Good evening and welcome to Cumber Baptist Church, church night on a Tuesday evening. We welcome all who are listening online and we trust and pray that this time together around the Word of God and in prayer may be a source of great blessing to you. The announcements are very brief. On Christmas morning, we will have an online broadcast going out about half past ten in the morning. And so take that opportunity just to tune in and to just think about the true meaning of this Christmas season. And then on Sunday the 27th, the last Sunday of the year, our morning worship preceded by a season of prayer at half past ten. And then our morning service uh, at 11 o'clock. And maybe you could join us the last Sunday of the year. And it would be lovely to welcome you into our church building. Social distances are maintained and it's a very safe environment in which to worship God. Let's just pray together. Father, we do thank you for another day, a day in which we have experienced your goodness and your grace, a day in which we have known the richness of your promises and that provision that you bring to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. We're thinking about the coming of the Christ child. We're thinking about Emmanuel, God with us. And we thank you that the one who was born in Bethlehem's manger was the man of sorrows who would acquaint himself with our grief, going to the place called Calvary, bearing our sin and shame, dying for us on that cross, buried, rising again. And tonight he lives at the Father's right hand, our great high priest. Lord, we worship you. We praise your great and glorious name. And as we turn to your word this evening, we pray that you will bless it, that we will be strengthened in our hearts, equipped in our faith, and enabled to walk with God uh, as we allow his word to take root in our hearts. Bless all who will listen to us online. Bless all who will gather in the church building. Lord, we just look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing that lovely carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Till 
I want to read one verse to you this evening from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 12. And this is what the writer says. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The hymn writer pays this very appropriate tribute to the Word of God. He writes, O wonderful, wonderful Word of the Lord, true wisdom its pages unfold. And though we may read it a thousand times o'er, it never, no, no never, grows old. Tonight we are focusing our attention on the Gideon's International. And I want to share some information with you regarding that organization. The Gideon's International is an association of Christian business and professional men and their wives dedicated to telling people about Jesus through associating together for service, sharing personal testimony, and by providing Bibles and New Testaments. And while uh, their work is often recognized and associated with hotels. They also place and distribute scriptures in strategic locations. So they are available to those who want them, as well as to those who may not know that they need them. The history of the organization is very interesting. In the autumn of 1898, John H. Nicholson of Janesfield, Wisconsin, arrived at the Central Hotel at a place called Boscobel in Wisconsin for the night. The hotel was crowded, but he was offered a bed in a double room with a man called Samuel E. Hill of Bellot, Wisconsin. The two men discovered they shared a common belief in Christ, and they decided to have their evening devotions together. During their time, uh, their, their time of prayer, both felt the call to begin developing association. And on May, the 31st of May, 1899, the two men met again at Beaver Dam, West Coniston, where they decided the purpose of their association would be to ban Christian commercial travelers together for mutual recognition, personal evangelism, and united service for the Lord. They decided to call a meeting in Jansville, West Coniston, on the 1st of July, 1899, in the YMCA. Only three men were present at the meeting in Jansville, John H. Nicholson, Samuel E. Hill, and Will J. Knights. In light of the fact that nearly all of the Guineans in the early years of the association were traveling men, uh, the question naturally arose as to how they might be more effective witnesses in hotels. One trustee went so far as to suggest the Gideons supply a Bible for each bedroom of the hotels in the United States. He commented that, in my opinion, this would not only stimulate the activities of the rank and file of the membership, but would be a gracious act wholly in keeping with the divine commission of the Gideon organization. This plan, which they called the Bible Project, was adopted at Louisville, Kentucky in 1908. It has been over a hundred years since the Gideon, Gideon's International placed the first Bible in a hotel room in Montana. Through the grace of God and through the loving support of the local church and countless donors, more than two billion Bibles and New Testaments have been placed through, our, through the association. The distribution of the first billion scriptures by Gideon members spanned 93 years, from 1908 to 2001. Distribution of the second billion, however, was completed in just 13 years, from 2002 to 2015. And on average, more than two copies of God's Word are distributed per second, and over one million Bibles in the New Testament are distributed every four days. Membership is limited to current or retired business or professional men, age 21 or older, who are members in good standing of an evangelical or Protestant church. Wives of Gideons may join the Gideon International Auxiliary. However, 
This became a problem in the UK when the Charity Commission raised issues regarding the status of females in the Gideons under the terms of the Equality Act 2010, and that they did not have the same status as males, and that females should be able to join the Gideons as Gideons and not auxiliaries. This became an issue for Gideons International based in the US and the UK, and the UK were suspended from membership of the international movement and subsequently changed their names to Gideons UK. In July 2018, the International Cabinet refused to accept financial support from Gideons UK for worldwide ministry and removed its national association status because it was decided that the UK association did not accept its core values. It then objected to the UK using the name Gideons UK and took the case to a trademark court in the UK which ruled in their favour. What was the Gideons in the UK? What was the Gideons in the UK is now temporarily known as good news for everyone, while considerations are ongoing regarding a permanent name. From an organisation aspect, the UK is divided into ten regions, with Northern Ireland being one of those regions. Within Northern Ireland, there are ten branches, and the branch which covers this area is the North Down branch. Each branch is responsible for the distribution of scriptures in their branch area. Scriptures are distributed when, where, they're, where they're accepted. That may be in hotels, hospitals, boys' brigades, girls' brigades, schools, funeral directors, etc. Normally, there's a visit to each of the post-primary schools annually and personally distributing testaments to the first-year students. But during 2020, this was not possible due to the COVID-19 restrictions. However, each school that would normally have visited, each school that the, the uh, association would normally have visited agreed to accept testaments and undertook to distribute them to the first-year students. In the North Down area, uh, 200 and 2,400 testaments uh, were issued during September and October for first-year students. And each year, uh, when attending the Christmas market in ours, and on Saturday the uh, 12th, uh, they distributed 250 testaments at the market. While some people refused to accept them, many were very appreciative. Pray that those who accepted them will read the Word and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And pray that the many doors currently open for the distribution of Scripture will remain open, and that some which have closed may reopen. The cost of the Scriptures distributed is funded by the membership and by gifts from friends who have an interest in the work. We're asked to pray that the necessary finance will be forthcoming in order to continue the work. Membership of the organization in the UK is less restricted since the break with the US, and anyone who is born again and is a member in good standing of an evangelical Protestant church or assembly can join. Please pray that many will be called to join in order to help with the distribution of the Lord's Word to a needy world. The Bible teaches us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Paul reminds us in Romans 10 and verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we have already been reminded that the Word of God is living, active, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you remember what God's Word reminds us of in Isaiah 55 and verse 11? so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The psalmist says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Vance Havner, in one of his many helpful uh, commentaries, makes this common. Here is the best book, God's Word. 
Here it's in the best place, my heart. And here it's there for the best reason, that I might not sin against you. We're going to be praying tonight for the work of Gideon. Think again of the work of every home crusade, another great movement that seeks to use the printed page containing the message of the gospel throughout the length and breadth of the world. Many missionary societies, as we think about them and the work that they're doing. And then in our time of prayer, we're going to pray for one another, for our families. We're going to remember those tonight who maybe are facing Christmas for the first time without a loved one. There is a vacant chair. There's a missing form. There's a silent voice. But for them, just where they are tonight, Christmas may not seem the same. We want to pray for those who have suffered loss and those who continue to be affected greatly by this pandemic. We're praying for our government that they might be given great wisdom for our National Health Service, for doctors and nurses who continue to work tirelessly for the good and for the well-being of the patient. We think of auxiliary nurses. We think of ward orderlies. We think of workers within the hospital who are working very hard, doing all that they can to alleviate problem and pressure. We're praying for this vaccine that it may prove to be effective. And we're praying that as a church, we might respond to whatever regulation comes our way, that we will do nothing to mar our testimony, and that we'll do everything that we can to help the government in what they're seeking to do. Let's pray for our service on Christmas morning, and let's remember again uh, the service and the coming Lord's Day as we meet on the last Sunday of the year to worship and to praise God. As the Lord exercises your heart just where you are tonight, you can touch the throne of grace. You can speak into the heart of God tonight and find in your heavenly Father one who knows just what you need. So let's go to prayer. You pray where you are, and we will pray here. And then in a moment or two, we will sing our final carol. We sing the lovely carol as with gladness, men of old.
Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for what we have learned tonight about the work and witness of the Gideon movement. We thank you for many years of faithful witness. We thank you for many uh, New Testaments that have been placed into the hands of young people, men and women, Bibles that have been left in strategic places. And you have used your word to create faith within the hearts and lives of those who have read it. We pray for the ongoing needs of uh, that work, that it may be strong financially, that it may be able by the prayers and by the giving of God's people to do the work that you have called them to do. We think of the work of every home crusade. We think of many Christian organizations and missionary endeavors that are seeking to reach out to a needy world and bring hope and life and joy to men and women as they read the Word of God. We thank you tonight for God's Word, for the Scriptures that are God-breathed, for the Word of God that makes us wise unto salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So part us now in your fear and with your blessing. And may grace, mercy, and peace from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon us and upon all whom we love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.